that's where I, I'm beginning to sort of say that my role, I thought I fall out with both, but actually, if you could get the GM and the organic movements together, which they should be in the public sector, yes. then we could yes. be looking well, for a lot more Well, maybe green, the Greens, I mean, I'm not sure that the organic people will ever accept GMOs as being organic. Oh, I know. <laughs> but, uh, I know, but I have my problems. People who are concerned about the environment, I think we can contribute an enormous amount. And yeah. if you could take that on board, then we could make so well, much Well, if I was convinced progress. of it, I would, but I'm not. No, sure. but all this stopping you. you. The thing which is stopping you is your fear that something happens. you just accuse me of having a closed mind. I think that's a little bit unfair. But I've given you, you very like, good you reasons. I've given you a strong precautionary argument. Yes. And my argument is this, that what we, what we are doing, we are living in a society where we are obsessed with, with science and technology on a certain narrow understanding of those terms. We think that science and technology can solve everything. One of the, the reasons why a lot of scientists in the 60s didn't like organic food was because was they thought it wasn't high tech enough, essentially. Okay, and what we need to do, right. what we need to do is to start to move to, to a world where we don't think, how can we tweak a bit more and tweak a bit more and do something else new and do something yeah, else new that. in order to solve our problems. What we need to do is we need to start to look for a way forward, which is genuinely precautionary. And that will involve, yeah, yeah. That will involve paying more for our Food. Uh. That will involve paying more for our food, as you said, Charlie. Um, and it, it will, will feed involve the people in Africa, and it will uh, yeah. <laughs> feed all the, 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 the curious thing. I, the other the curious thing I have, you know, is, is that, for the most part, as an environmentalist, I hear and I want people saying, "I wish people would believe the science on <laughs> climate change. Mm. That we have a real problem if people <laughs> don't believe the science of it, mm. right? And especially in America and." You know the, the issue that somehow the scientists you know have cobbled it all together and you know whatever, and you oh, would agree with absolutely would agree with that. So what I'm curious about is you want science to come in to make that case. Mm -hmm. Why don't you listen to the scientists on the GM case? That's what I don't it's not understand. Analysis. GM is not fundamentally a science, it's a technology. It's a technology. Right. Right. I'm all in favour of science. Science is about fundamentally understanding how things work. Yes. And that's an essential precondition for going on to do various other things. Although a lot of the things that we actually need to do uh, have nothing much to do with science. They're to do with social or political interventions. Yeah. But GM, somewhat like nuclear, is not, is not a science. It's a technology. And I've, I'm afraid that a lot of the advocates of GM are using the idea of science to hide behind so that it can be suggested that to be anti-GM is to be anti-science. Completely false. To be anti-GM is, is to suggest that there is a particular technology that at this time we don't believe can be taken up while being genuinely precautious. And I, I, I make again my pragmatic point. I don't like, that let's, I don't like let's that keep argument. Some that part of the world. Let's keep some part of the no, world free the from world GM food. Well, you're you're not free from I'm science. sorry. No, I'm sorry. You the one. You're the guys who are doing no, an uncontrolled no. experiment across the entire world. I'm saying I'm let's keep anything. some part of the world. <laughs> let's keep some part of the world out of that experiment. That's all I'm saying. I think it's an extremely modest request. Oh, yes, let's let's, just, the get, world and let's it, just get real else. here. So yes. any soya product that you consume here in England has been come from a genetically modified plant. Yes. Uh, we Must grow not. GM plants in Europe. They're grown in Spain yeah. <laughs> and yeah. uh, they're grown in France as well. So let's say you can't say let's keep it free. So, All you're, of the you're, soy so you're, meal, you're throwing the, the towel and just meal. give up. We allowed GM everywhere. And we and we have no we have nothing to fall back on if GM does turn out to have some hidden but hazards you're still, as you're pesticides. Years in and we didn't, there's no. It's not like pesticides yeah, where people were dying over enough. and. Fifteen years is but not enough. Not a the human sign. race has been around for hundreds of thousands there's of not years. A, it's not, right? I've, I've been looking but around. I've been looking about, around. You said you didn't care about human health. I can't find a single thing. Excuse me. I did not say I didn't care about human health. I said I wasn't concerned about. I wasn't particularly concerned about the threats from GM to human health. The direct threats from GM to human health. Actually, there could be some benefits. Yeah, the you can move from one thing to another if you want, but if you want to stick to the various <laughs> different points that we're making, but, let's but stick I mean, to one you said it was a question of the environment that that's what you're yeah, and really that, that of course it then indirectly goes on. But I've, I've explained to you that everything that we do in terms of conventional breeding, which you don't seem to have the same hang-ups about, has exactly the same challenges. If you uh, mm. produce a, a disease-resistant uh, plant yes. by wide crossing, then shouldn't you take the precautionary principle for that as mm. well? It's, well, it's another an interesting piece question, of DNA but I don't think it's species. at all fair to say. It's, it's just, it's just, it's a ludicrous comparison to it's say. Wait, wait, it's a ludicrous comparison to say that it's the same thing to take a, a bit of a, a fish and put in a tomato as it is to, to blend two bits of, of, of wheat style crops together. It's not the same thing. Genetically well, the same mod genetic modification is a new <laughs> technology and it deserves to be assessed as a new technology. And I'm suggesting we should take a precautionary attitude to it. 15 years isn't enough. It wasn't enough for pesticides. It's not enough for GM.
Well, the difference is with pesticides, people, as you said, weren't looking out for it. There's loads of people looking out for GM, anything going wrong, yeah. and they still haven't found it. Well, the trouble is, right, they haven't. The and they've been looking right. quite a while longer before we commit. The whole world. How long? The whole world. Long? Well, I would, I would think a, a, a period of, of several generations would be appropriate. But the trouble is, Rupert, we, we, we go back to the world population expanding yes, all the time. Absolutely. Yeah, and How many people so, are going so to So the next question to ask is, is there any good evidence that well, or in the round the that in the round the GM food burn. is actually a serious contributor to increasing crop yields? And it seems to me that so far the evidence is not particularly. There are many other things which are which I think are much more serious contributors. Yeah, but you're just ba basing that on the on on the GM crops that are available at the moment. Of course you can always but promise jam tomorrow, but if you were talking promises, about what's happened so not far. Not promises. There have been a lot of people who have promised. A lot right. of people from John Innes have said, we will feed the world, give us the money and we'll feed the world. Well, I hope, no, I don't think anyone from John Innes well, has said That's what the EDP that. says they've said. No. <laughs> no. A you correspondent... Don't believe anything you read, Rupert. <laughs> uh, I want to give the example of the potato Please and the uh, palmettiers. Uh, so in the, in the 18th century, particularly in France, uh, there was a big push to try and get people to eat a new vegetable called the potato, uh, which had been brought over from mm. America. And people really were really, yeah. really resistant towards eating this yeah. uh, because it was a member of the nightshade family and they yeah. were poisonous. And it was really, really difficult to get um, yeah, particularly uh, working class people to, to eat it. And it, there was a real advantage because someone who was in an industrial cottage would have enough land that he could grow enough potatoes to feed himself and his family uh, uh, during the winter with potatoes. You could never do that with wheat. The other mm. thing about uh, the potato was that it was seen as a, 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 a lower class form so, of food yes. and there was Stable enormous food, resistance and they went the through two famines wheat, and one revolution and mm. then Palmetier decided that uh, with all of these things which I think bear an uncanny mm. similarity to your problems with uh, GMOs mm -hmm. and then Palmetier said okay we really need to be able to get people to eat uh, potatoes. And what did they do? They planted a field of potatoes and they put armed guards around the outside with guns pointing out sure. to people. But when the, it came night time, then they, the guards went away <laughs> and the field was left unguarded. And then yeah. the people came and took Raided. the potatoes. Yeah. And that's and how that potato dauphinoise was born. And no it. one would no, dream, no one would dream of saying that potato was uh, <gasps> accepted. And what was the precautionary <laughs> argument against growing potatoes? Because they're a they're member of the family. nightshade family, yeah. so they're poisonous. And they are poisonous you if you eat them raw. If you eat <laughs> yeah, them raw. Yeah, but it's not a very good argument, is it? I mean, yeah, it's the it's exactly the same, the same, the same as what you're saying. It's not exactly the same at all. It is. It is, because if you grow potatoes and they're toxic, then they will alter the environment. They will alter yes. the pests that are there. Yeah. They will do all sorts you of things. You can well imagine. Look, no, no, come on. Potatoes, it's not as if... You can't believe it. Potatoes weren't a new crop, right? Potatoes... They were precisely They weren't a new crop in the entire world they weren't they, they, yeah, they were around, wasn't, they were in, I know I know yeah. but people had perfectly well lived on potatoes that's what we're trying to tell you about GMOs it's not true it's not true that people have lived for, for centuries and centuries in in environments that are sustainable and can be shown that there's no damage to biodiversity with GMOs that's not true Nobody and that's what I'm saying that is what the effects on biodiversity well, of introducing a new crop is and people well, are introducing new crops and new varieties all the time okay so you've just said that any time a new variety is brought in, then they should look at the complete uh, effects on biodiversity. Well, it's not going to happen. Well, but as I said a little while ago, I think it's misleading to suggest um, that introducing a new crop variety via traditional methods is the same thing as introducing a genetically modified crop. You know, it, that would be to say that would, when you read the story, if you, are, if you think two hundred years ago, it's remarkably similar. Yeah. I read it exactly. I thought no, this is exactly it's the absolutely same. Absolutely, clearly not similar. It's <laughs> absolutely not similar because you can laugh, you can laugh all you want, but it's not similar. I think a lot of people are fearful. I think a lot of people are actually fearful. Yeah, but that's not the argument that I'm making. There's no evidence that they are. But the people are fearful. I'm making a precautionary argument. No, no, you keep doing that. I keep saying. Yeah, but the you need to listen to no, my argument. No, I, I remember what the precaution. It's very distinct from the no, arguments that were made the at the time of the, the introduction of potatoes to France. No, no the precautionary <laughs> argument was, is, is obviously a late. 20th century invention of which I say I was part of mm. but you know the point was you made a decision without waiting for the scientific evidence to stack up completely but the precautionary argument said where there is significant risk yeah right now I have to turn around after 15 years and say I don't see any significant risk 
Well, uh, there might be a tiny little risk. I simply say to you risk. again that when the inter- when pesticides no, really were introduced on on mass uh, and with the that's 15 right, we years before we realised there was a terrible problem, people would have said exactly the same as what you just said. Okay, I'm, I'm surprised that you're so um, you're adopting this attitude because of the pesticide problem. I mean, you don't like pesticides anymore. Than Absolutely, I do. but that's mm-hmm. why I've suggested that we need, we need a third way: neither pesticides nor GM, yeah. a way that's genuinely but precautionary. You and I both realize that's what we need to be looking yeah, for. Yeah, the third way. Something I, genuinely hopeful. Third way is a good be idea. really good for the future. Third, I, third way is a good idea, but getting it to work would be impossible. No, applications to solve challenge. food security right. problems yeah. uh, are because uh, the other Food is not enough. Yeah. We need to give people food sovereignty. Uh, the only your definition of food security is different from my definition of food security. Okay, well, what no. do you think food security is? Well, it's been very interesting indeed. S- <laughs> sustainable, sustainable <laughs> healthy food for all. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much for your contribution right. and the very pleasant way in which it's been conducted. And it's a pity that debates cannot be held like this elsewhere, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs>